Hi, I'm James, and this is a video to get you started with the Print Pro plugin for Bubble from Zero Code. Just before we jump into it, if you need any help building your Apple product, feel free to reach out to our team by visiting our website at zerocode.com. We're the largest maker of plugins for Bubble, as well as the top gold tier Bubble agency. We have almost 10 years of experience and can help you build any web, mobile, or AI product, or even help automate your business. While you're there, make sure you check out zerocode.com slash plugins. This is the full list of all the plugins we make, and there's over 800 of them, probably even more by the time you watch this. There's something there to cover pretty much everything your app could possibly need to do. For example, there's Stripe Marketplace Express for accepting payments within your app. Mapbox Maps for super customizable advanced maps functionality. AWS File Uploader, which is great for saving on bubble hosting costs and so many more. So make sure you check all that out as well. Let's start with an overview of the plugin itself. So what this plugin allow you to do within your bubble apps is print elements, print groups, print specific parts of pages, all sorts of control around what gets printed and how it gets printed and the styling and, and all sorts of customization options. So you're avoiding that, um, you know, that problem when someone tries to print a web page and the formatting just goes crazy. So this, this lets you solve all of that. Uh, so on the plugin page here on the Zero Code website, there are a few links to check out before uh, you dive in. The first here is the live demo button. Now this is going to open up a pre-built bubble app with the plugin installed, and we can experience it from a user's point of view and see how it works and feels and check out the functionality as there are a few things this plugin can do. So the first is you can preview a PDF document here in the browser. Uh, you can see we're previewing this URL here. Uh, you can then you know print it and, and work with it in any way that you want to. Um, you can preview HTML in the same way. And then we go into our printing um, specific workflows and actions. So you can print a group by an ID, you can print the whole page, print a specific element on the page. In this case, it's the invoice. Um, I'll a single element as well here, a graph, or print a different page using the page name to reference it. Uh, and so if we then, you know, for example, print a single element, if I go print element, you'll then see it's just that element here on the page. I'm hoping my screen recording software is picking this up, but it's showing just that graph in the print preview pop-up. Uh, the same with the group. Here we go, we can see it's multiple elements here, including uh, the button and everything we see here. Um, yeah, basically also control around what we can print and, and how, um, how that gets formatted. If we go back to the plugin page, the demo editor button here next to the live demo button will open up the exact same app we were just looking at um, with the plugin installed, but from the editor point of view. So we can go in and see how this all works and check out you know, the, um, whoop, uh, the workflows associated and how it's all set up, uh, what parameters and properties we can control and customize here. Uh, and yeah, how it all um, how it's all built. So this is a great way to check uh, the functionality and and what can be customized before uh, installing the plugin into your app and and verifying that it does what you're wanting it to do within your app. There's also the documentation link here. This will open up every bit of information we need to install and customize and configure um, the the plugin. So we have how to set up the different elements and the properties associated with the different elements. Uh, we can see that there are three elements of this plugin, the PDF viewer, the print toolkit, and the print pro viewer. And then underneath here, we have all the information around uh, setting this up and how it works and, and to reference. I usually keep this open in a separate tab while I'm uh, building in Bubble. It's great to reference to while, um, while you're working. The last thing I want to mention on this page is our intercom chat bubble here in the bottom right. If you have any questions at all about this plugin, uh, questions before installing, while installing, troubleshooting, send us a message here. We'd love to help out and uh, get you up and running. All right, let's jump into bubble and see how we can set this up. The first thing we need to do is get the plugin into our app. So on the left-hand side here, click the plugins tab and then click the add plugins button in the top right. And we go to search for print pro. And here it is, print pro by zero code. Now there are two ways you can install this plugin in your app. There's a one-stop purchase or there's a monthly subscription. Now the monthly subscription is the cheapest and most risk-free way to try this out as you're charged on a pro rider basis. You're only charged for the days that you have the plugin installed and active in your app. Uh, so if I installed this today, tried it out, worked out it wasn't quite right for my, uh, my app's needs and then uninstalled it tomorrow, I'd only be charged for that one day. So in this case, $4 divided by say 30 days in a month. Really great way to try this out without spending too much to make sure it works. Uh, for what you're wanting it to do, and then you can commit to the larger price down the track if need be. Whichever way you go, uh, install this plugin in your app, and let's jump back over to the editor and set everything up. Okay, now that we have the plugin in our app, we will have new elements in our assets panel. So if I search for print here, we have the print toolkit and the print pro viewer. 
let's drag the print toolkit onto the page. Uh, now this is a nice and relatively simple uh, plugin installation and configuration. We really just need this element on the page somewhere so that we can access the actions and workflows that are associated. So if we look here in the properties panel, there's not really much we need to change. We really do just, yeah, need this on the page. Uh, and we can then start to reference this in our workflows. So let's have a look at a few of those right now. To do that, I'm going to put a button on the page and let's just call this on print. So we have something to reference in our, uh, in our workflows. And I'll add a workflow to this. I'll click to add an action and I will search for print. And you'll see we have a bunch of actions here. We have print elements, a print toolkit, print HTML template, a print toolkit, uh, the advanced version, print a whole page, invoice builder, print another page, print element inline styles, and print element ID. So there's lots of flexibility around what we want to reference to print and how it's printed and how it's styled and configured before printing. So let's start by printing a single element. So I will select print element by ID, and we need to specify the ID of the element we want to print. Now to do this, we need to make sure if we go into settings and then general and right down the bottom, we want to make sure that we have checked this box, expose the option to add an ID attribute to HTML elements. Make sure that's checked in your settings. Because what that'll mean is you'll have a new, if you go right down the bottom here, you'll have a new field now for every element called ID attribute. And this is how we're going to identify and specify in our print workflows what's being printed. So you might want to print um, a table that's on the page or a graph or something from any other plugin. Uh, whatever's specific and relevant to your uh, particular app. In my case, I'm going to keep things very simple and I'm just going to put an image on the page. And I will upload an image here. That is oof, very stretched. There we go, that's a bit better. <laughs> All right, now with this image selected, right down the bottom in the appearance tab, I'm going to say, uh, let's just call this image. So that is our ID attribute of this element. So now if we go to our workflow again and the action print element by ID, we can put the ID image and it'll know to reference whatever the element on the page that has this ID is. And we'll call this image download. So this is pretty great. We can specify the name of the file that's going to be downloaded. You can make this dynamic data. You can make this static data, something relevant to your app. Uh, whatever's most useful to your users as they're downloading this. So it could be, you know, image download, um, dash current date and time formatted as, let's say, that there. Great. So now each download will be unique with the current date and time. I'll go back to our design tab. I'll change this label to say print image so we know what it's printing. And let's press preview and see what we have. Okay, if I press print image, there we go. We have just, I'm really hoping this pop-up shows in my screen recorder, but we have just the image in our print preview modal here in, in Chrome. Uh, the button print image isn't showing. No other elements around the page are showing. It's just the image. Nice and simple here. Let's get back to the editor and let's look at some of the other workflows that are here. I'm going to put a group on the page and we're going to um, specify printing a full group instead this time. Again, you would probably do something here like we saw in the demo, print group by ID. So you could print this table here and this graph and this button all in one group. Um, but for our use case, I'm gonna keep things very simple once again and just put two images in this group. Uh, but this will work for anything you have in the group here. I'm going to make this a row and I'll upload some images for these. Okay, I'm just going to fix a bit of um, the layout. There we go. Okay, now let's put a button on the page just above the group and we'll say print group as that label. And we need to name, uh, we need to give this group an ID because uh, that's going to reference, just like we saw referencing the single elements by ID, it's going to reference the group by ID. So with the group A selected, let's call this group uh, Nice and simple. <laughs> okay, now let's select this button and let's add a workflow to print group. Let's type in print again. And uh, let's say print elements, a print toolkit. So we have plural now of elements. And we can see a bunch of options we can configure here. 
So we can see actually we can do multiple IDs, just needing to place a comma at the end of each ID. If you have multiple groups that you're wanting to print, we can include the pages CSS and the pages styles or an external CSS file if you want the print version of the element to look different to how it's displayed on the page and whether we're removing it line styles, if there's a delay. And if we click here under show documentation, uh, which is very handy under all the elements, there's a show documentation button that gives more information about uh, each parameter and each property. The more you print, the longer this needs to be, just so that all the elements can be loaded and ready to print before, um, before you print. Especially useful if you've got multiple IDs and multiple groups that you're printing here. So I'll leave this uh, the same, uh, but you can also add an HTML header or a footer to what you're printing that's specific to just this print uh, that doesn't display on the page. So you might have some information, maybe a company letterhead uh, or a footer that says something like, for more information, go to this URL. Um, lots of flexibility around this to make this, uh, the, the print version have exactly what um, parameters that you wanted to have independent of what's on the screen. But in our case, um, by keeping this very simple, we only have one print toolkit on the page, so we only need to reference that. And the ID we know is just group in our case. So I'll just call this group as well. All right, let's hit preview and check it out. So we know if we click print image, it'll display our single image. Nice. If we uh, click print group, we should see just those two images. There we go. Just those two images, no other elements of the page, no buttons, no footer, header, nothing. Just those two images. Nice. Working well. Now we did see there were a few other elements here. We have the print pro viewer. So we've been using the print toolkit so far. This is our print toolkit. But there's also the print pro viewer that comes with this plugin. So let's just put that on the page here. Now, what this does is it renders HTML from anywhere else in your app and you can view it and then print it. Uh, so this could be an input, this could be something generated within your app, something dynamic, uh, however works within your, within your app setup. And similarly, it's also the PDF viewer that's part of this app. Uh, exactly the same thing. You can put the URL of the PDF in here. This could be from an input in your app. This could be, um, anywhere else being uh, from your database. Uh, and that will then preview that and print that. So it could be if it's generated by another plugin, if there's a PDF being made as an invoice or something like that, great way to, um, to view that and, and print that. For those two, make sure you check out the documentation. You can see here we have the PDF viewer. So it displays the content of a PDF file from a URL and they have a dynamic input value here. Um, and there's also for the print pro viewer down the bottom here, makes a preview for input HTML code. And you just put the HTML code in there. For more advanced implementations, make sure you check out the uh, demo app that we saw at the beginning of the video. You can see here all the different functions of previewing HTML and printing a group by ID, which we did ourselves. We did printing a single element as well, but you can see how you can make it for printing an invoice, referencing a different page to print, and every other um, way you can install and set this up. But this should be what we need for our app to get, uh, get you up and running for this plugin. We have printing a single element referenced by ID, and then we have printing a group referenced by ID with their corresponding workflows. And that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope it was helpful. And if you have any questions at all about this plugin, don't hesitate to reach out. We would love to help out. Happy building.